welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. I am Charles Capps, and we're teaching on the subject of prophetic profile and following the timeline. And in this broadcast, we're going to talk about uh, man's dominion, his days of dominion. Uh, we have started in Genesis chapter 1 with the other broadcast, and I want us to go back to Genesis chapter 1 because in, in verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl there, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing. <laughs> you know, it's good news to know that you just have dominion over creeps nowadays. And he says, so God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God blessed them. God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Now notice, he said, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl there, over the, every living thing, you know, that uh, moveth upon the earth. Now, Psalms 8 says, over all the work of his hands. So that is an awesome statement. God created man to have dominion on this planet. Now, we talked about uh, four keys to, to understanding the end time and the prophetic profile and through the Word of God, prophetic timeline. Key number one, a day is with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. Uh, Isaiah chapter 46 tells us that uh, God spoke the end from the beginning. And we talked about that on the last broadcast right here in, uh, in Genesis chapter 1. And then uh, we found in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 where that Solomon said, the thing that hath been is that which shall be. I call it the Solomon concept that reveals the future in a very unique way. Things that happen in days past recorded in this book, certain events reveal the future in a very unique way. And then, of course, uh, the key that God said that he had finished the work from the foundation of the world. So the whole thing is consummated here in Genesis. He gives you an overall view of it. And here we're going to talk about the days of man's dominion. He said, have dominion and subdue the earth. Have dominion over it. Well, for how long? Evidently it's for 6,000 years of determined time because in this Genesis account, six days God labored. Everything was created in six days. And the seventh day he rested. He rested because it was finished, not because he was tired. It was perfected. And that is a prophetic profile that after 6,000 years of determined time. Now, I keep using that word determined time because don't get it mixed up with our time. Uh, this is God's determined time. And the 70th week of Daniel is determined time. That's what the angel said to Daniel. There's 70 weeks determined upon thy people. So God deals in determined time. And that's what I want you to uh, get in this because as we go over into the, the other scriptures, it'll, it'll be very vital to understand that. <clears throat> so man's days of dominion. Now let's go over to Job, the seventh chapter. Now, there's some prof prophetic things in the book of Job. <laughs> now, I've, I've talked to some folks that they get pathetic things out of the book of Job instead of prophetic. Uh, and they think that, you know, that God just turned uh, uh, Job over to the devil and, and all of this. But uh, when you study it out, you find out God gave Job twice what he ever had. And that's what God did for Job, and the devil did the rest of it. And there's some reason for it, but we can't get into it now. But here in the seventh chapter of Job, verse 1, it says, Is there not an appointed time for man upon the earth? Now, that can, would seem to confirm what the Genesis account over here reveals, that in six days it was finished, and the seventh day was a day of rest. It fits perfectly with the seventh millennium 
being the millennial reign of Christ. So he says, Is there not appointed time for man upon the earth? Are not his days like the days of a hireling? Now, what's a hireling? That's a hired hand. Now, if let's, let's just look at it this way. If you owned a business, you hired somebody to come in and manage your business while you've gone on vacation for a month. Then they would have the authority to come there, and they could make decisions in that business. Now, they might make some wrong decisions, but you gave them the authority to make them. They have the right to be there and to oversee that business. But it's determined time. Now, that's what this scripture is saying. There's appointed time for man upon the earth. And uh, when you understand that, it's linked to this timeline that starts in Genesis chapter 1 that says it was finished after six days. In other words, that, that part of it was finished. Then there is the seventh millennium, which God uh, calls a day of rest, not only for God, but for all the righteous. For there'll be a thousand years of righteous rule and peace upon the earth. Now, let's go uh, a little further. Let's go over here to the uh, 14th chapter. In the 14th chapter of Job, we find an interesting statement along this line. In verse uh, 5, he says, Seeing his days are numbered, now he's talking about man, seeing his days are determined, the number of months are with thee. Here again, he states, His days are determined, the number of months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds, and he cannot pass. Now that ought to tell us something, that there is a determined time in which man will have dominion on earth. Now you have people that say, well, you know, if there was a God, then, then he wouldn't allow all these things that are happening on earth, you know. They, uh, through abortion, they're killing a, about a million or more unborn children every year. Well, if there was a God, he wouldn't allow that. No, there is a God, all right, and because he honors his word and he gave man dominion for 6,000 years of determined time, and if man don't change that law, it'll continue to happen. But when the earth lease expires, the law will be changed. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. Now, what we see here, his days are numbered, and his number of months are with thee, or the days are determined. That's the word he uses. His number of months with thee. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish uh, as a hireling his days. Here again, he brings up this word hireling. As he must accomplish. Man must have dominion on this planet and until his days are up. In other words, accomplished. And from all I see, the prophetic implications is that it's after 6,000 years of determined time. Again, I want to relate it to a ball game. A football game is one hour determined time, but you never saw a football game played in one hour? You never will. There are timeouts, there's time delays. God has the uh, right to have timeouts in his prophetic fulfillment like he did in the 70th week of Daniel. Sixty-nine of those weeks came to pass, and they crucified Christ. Then he turned his time clock off. He turn, turned the time clock off, and, and he's reserved that till a later time, and that will be the tribulation period. So here he says, uh, his days are determined, his number of months are with thee. Now, this is an amazing statement here. A number of months are with thee. Uh, you don't have any months in 6,000 years? 72,000. Well, somebody might say, well, why is that significant? For this reason, the number 600 is a very significant number in Scriptures because it's associated, first of all, with, with Noah. He was 600 years old when he entered into the ark. Now, the ark is a type of Jesus because uh, he, <laughs> when, when they built the temple, the ark that was in that, what was in that ark was nothing but the Word of God written in stone. And so the ark was an escape for Noah. 
and his family, the righteous, out of the flood. When the destruction came upon the wicked, they were lifted up above it. It's a, a prophetic profile of the rapture of the righteous from the earth before destruction comes again. Now, I said all that to say this, Noah was 600 years old when he entered into the ark. Uh, you will find that the number 600 is associated with God's people in one way or another throughout the Scriptures. Not always, but uh, there's a significant amount of it to the point that it'll help you understand that uh, uh, David paid 600 uh, talents or shekels, one or the other, of gold for Arnan's thrashing floor where he built, uh, Solomon built the temple. 600. So that's associated with God's people, God's worship. Then you have the number 600 associated with Saul. When he won a battle, he had 600 men with him. Then he lost the anointing of God, and the anointing came upon David, and then David had 600 men with him. Uh, then uh, Solomon built some shields, that 200 shields that had 600 shekels of go uh, gold in each shield. <laughs> and uh, what was it to do? Protect God's people from uh, the missiles that the army would shoot at them and so on, which were arrows at that time. But you see how it's associated with God's people. Now, I said that to say this. If you divide the number 600 into 72,000, you come up with 120. And uh, uh, 120 jubilees is 6,000 years. So uh, the way that numbers are associated with events in the Scripture gives us prophetic insight and confirms the revelation of the Word. And I thought that was exciting. Now, there's some more things we'll say about that just a little further on. But uh, this tells us that his days are numbered. He come down to verse 14 says, If a man die, shall he live again all the days of my appointed time? I will wait till my change comes. Job even knew there was a change coming, and, and, and you need to realize there's a change coming. There's a change coming after 6,000 years of determined time on God's calendar. There's going to be major changes on this planet, and uh, there's going to be some glory <laughs> of God shown up on this planet like the earth has never seen before. And uh, I'd like to preach that now, but we better go on with what we're going. We'll get into it on some of the other broadcasts. So here we have uh, that he says man's days are numbered. So in the Genesis account, what we find that man was given a lease on this planet, so to speak. Uh, Adam had a 6,000-year lease on this planet, or mankind, not just Adam. Adam didn't live that long, but mankind had a 6,000-year lease on this planet. Now, these people said to me, Brother Caps, I've never seen anything in the Bible about an earth lease. Well, it doesn't say earth lease, but let me read it to you. It's in there in uh, Mark chapter 12. Uh, now, we notice here in Mark chapter 12, And he began to speak unto them a parable. A certain man planted a vineyard, and hedged it about, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. Now, listen to this. And at a season he sent the husbandman uh, a servant, that he might receive of the husbandman the fruit of the vineyard, and they caught him, beat him, sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones, they wounded him in the head, sent him away shamefully handled. Does this begin to sound familiar to you? And again he sent another to him. They killed him. They killed him they killed, and many others beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son well beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. Now you realize who he's talking about here. It's himself. It's Jesus. He is telling you that God gave man a lease on this planet. Now he leased it out. Let it out means leased it out to husbandmen. We read you the lease. Let them have dominion. For how long? It was all finished after six days, representing 6,000 years of determined time. Not our calendar, you understand, 
But when that 6,000 years of determined time is up, there's going to be an event that will reveal it's up, and uh, then we will know. The righteous of the earth will know. But here we have it. Let's read on. And he says, And they took him, killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. He has sent his son, and he killed him. That is no doubt referring to Jesus. And uh, cast him out of the garden, uh, out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandman, and he will give the vineyard to others. In other words, he takes back control of this earth lease after the days have been determined, and it's time for the harvest. Notice, he came to receive the harvest of the earth. And I'm telling you, folks, that we're in the end time harvest, and, and it, there's some things coming that's going to be beyond what we've ever imagined. It says, we have, not, have you not read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? This was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in His eyes. God gave mankind dominion or a lease on this planet. We could call it an earth lease. He leased it out for that period of time, and man had to make the decision. God did not control these things. Now, you see bumper stickers that says, God has everything under control. Well, now, they think they're helping God out, don't know they're doing him a disservice, because God has an overall control of how it ends, but God does not have control of everything that happens on the earth right now because he gave man authority to take control over that. And if man don't stop some of these things that are happening, that are killing people and so on, uh, uh, young unborn children, then it won't happen until God takes back control of this planet. When he takes it back, it's going to be a thousand years of righteous rule and peace. There's going to be other people controlling it, righteous people <laughs> controlling it. And I'll tell you, I'm getting excited about it. I don't know whether it helped you or not, but I'm, I'm I'm talking, <laughs> talk myself happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, he said, uh, they let it out to a husbandman. So, there's an earth lease on this planet, and it's about to expire. You need to know that, because God is going to do some things that, that has never been done before. And it's all revealed right here in this book, the Bible. And it, it comes through the Solomon concept. Now, let's go back over to the, the Genesis account and go to Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, we find a scripture here, verse 3, and said, The Lord said, My spirit will not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, you don't want to jump to conclusion that this is talking about the length of man's life because Moses, and evidently this is, or, or Noah, this is evidently who he uh, spoke this to. Noah lived 950 years. So we're not talking about the age, age of a man. We're talking about man's days of dominion is what this is referring to. It's the only thing that fits prophetically. And it says that he is... Uh, a uh, day shall be 120 years, his days of dominion. And that's what we read in the book of Job, where it says his days are determined. In other words, uh, and there's going to be a change. So there's a change coming. So 120 jubilees, this is referring to jubilees. A hundred, uh, every 50th year in Israel was supposed to be a jubilee. And 120 jubilees is 6,000 years. So again, here you come back to the same timeline that we found in Genesis chapter 1. God keeps revealing this thing over and over and over through the Scriptures. Uh, and it's, it's, it's important to understand that what, what is being referred to here. Now, some would say, and of course, how many of you know there's a law of double reference, where there is reference for one thing, but it also fits in another? Some say, well, this is God gave Noah uh, or, or Adam uh, 120 years to repent. Well, judgment came after about 120 years, and, and that may be a prophetic uh, revelation in itself, that judgment will come again 
in a hundred and twenty jubilees of determined time. So it's twofold. Uh, you can never exhaust the revelation of the Word of God because it's, it, it's, there's more than one meaning to it. So this is important to understand that it, the Scripture has uh, pretty much laid it out here. And then uh, when you, you come over here, let's, let's talk about the seventh chapter just a little bit because this is where uh, God revealed to Noah when the flood was coming. And uh, now you mentioned... I mentioned this, I think, maybe on the other broadcast, that uh, Noah was 600 years old when he entered into the ark. Now, he knew the exact day he's going to enter into the ark. Now, there's people that say that there's no, the word rapture is not in the Bible. The word rapture is in the Hebrew, original Hebrew of Genesis, I think, 26 times in, in Genesis in a skip sequence rapture, rapture, and, and it's uh, associated with jubilee sometimes. Uh, we'll not get into that right now. I may talk about it later. But here you find that he knew in seven days, God told him, yet seven days and the flood will be upon the earth. He knew the exact day the destruction was coming. Now, you know, we have a scripture that says, uh, Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. We understand that because no one knew it back then. No one knows it right now. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to start setting dates. But it doesn't say that no man will ever know. The indication is when the generation appears on the scene and it comes time that we will know the exact day of the rapture of the church. And don't write me letters and tell me the word rapture is not in the Bible because it's in the original Hebrew time and time again in a skip sequence in the Scriptures where it talks about uh, being caught away and, and a Scripture that would be the profile of the rapture. You find it in the original Hebrew embedded in the Scriptures. And, and that's God's way of revealing it to where we can understand that's what it's talking about. Now this wasn't known years ago. They didn't need this information. But Noah was 600 years old, and he knew the exact day that the, the flood was coming. And I'm telling you, if you stay with the Word of God, you will know the time is short. Most people know it now. Even sinners on the street tell you, you know, that, that time is short. There's just something about it that people uh, can uh, sense the fact that we're coming to some awesome times ahead. And, uh, you know, you get into the Old Testament, it talks about darkness, gross darkness will cover the earth. Well, in the same time frame, the glory of the Lord shall shine upon us. You know, I mean, there's darkness coming for the wicked and light, more light is coming for the righteous. So it depends on which you choose, the light or the, or the darkness. But the prophetic profiles in the Scripture lays it out so plain, and, and as you go through the Scriptures, you can see how God has revealed all through time. And, and I, I want to go back again to the Solomon concept in, in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. Solomon said in verse 9 and 10, The thing that hath been, when in days past is that which shall be, and the thing that is done is that which shall be done. In other words, the, the present reveals the future, and, and the present was revealed in the past. I mean, uh, when you come down to it, it kind of gets to resembling what Einstein said before he died. He said the difference between the past, the present, and the future is just an illusion. It all happens at the same time. Now, that'll keep you awake at night, <laughs> trying to figure that out. But I think I understand it to some degree. I don't know that I could explain it to you right now. But what happened years ago uh, uh, fashioned the present, and what happens in the present will fashion the future. And it's all sort of in the same timeline, if you understand what I'm saying. So it's important to understand this, that Solomon said, that which has been recorded in this book, certain events, not all events, uh, certainly, but uh, certain events reveals the future in a very unique way. He said, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and the thing that is done, it is that 
which shall be done. So here we find that Noah, that, uh, Noah knew the exact day when he's going to enter into the ark and when the judgment's coming. And wouldn't it kindly imply then by just law of reference that we might know the exact day of the rapture before it happens? We don't know now, but there's an event that I believe that will reveal the exact time and it has to do with the new moon, but we don't have time to get into that. I'll tell you, I hope I've helped you. I've talked myself happy anyway. Now, before I leave the broadcast, I want to uh, talk about this book. This is called End Time Events, Journey to the End of the Age. This is a, the uh, paperback. Uh, it's a revised, expanded version of End Time Events. Um, and, and it goes through all of these things that we'll cover here on the broadcast and many things that we won't have time to cover. It, this, this book will put you on a scriptural journey through the ages and bring you to Revelation that's about 169 page, uh, 360, so 269, I'll get it right in a minute. And uh, this book offer number 2522, End Time Events, Journey to the End of the Age, $15 plus $4 postage and handling. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. If you order by MasterCard or Visa, you'll get it much quicker if you order by that, or if you order it from www.charlescaps.com, our website, you can order it there, and you might get it quicker if you order it there at, at times. So it's available to you. In this book, we talk about when will the age end. And like I said, we're not in set dates. We're showing prophetic profiles. When will the Antichrist be revealed? Uh, will God protect his people, deliver them from the seven years of tribulation? We answer that thoroughly in this book. What Bible keys reveal the end of the church age? And many other things. Uh, this book will just be a blessing to you. Uh, you need that book. You can study it. It's not one you just read. You study it with your Bible in your hand. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. If you're not ready, get ready. He is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our mp3 teachings ebooks and watch other programs on demand this broadcast has been sponsored by caps ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the word of god to work in the everyday circumstances of your life